I don't say that to you, though. On. Hi, everyone. I am here with a Bible reading. Um, today we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 26, verse 47 through 68, Psalm 32, and Proverbs chapter 8, verses 27 through 32. Okay, so we've got a sad couple of days coming up with our reading in Matthew. We ended off yesterday in Matthew where Jesus was telling Peter and another disciple to wake up because the hour had come when he was going to be betrayed into the hands of men. Um, and now you're going to see Judas Iscariot coming today with his little mob of people coming to arrest Jesus and the disciples fleeing just as Jesus told them they would and you're going to see Jesus before the Sanhedrin and later on you know not today but later on you're going to we're going to read about Jesus you know the way they treat Jesus being flogged and beaten and made fun of and all the horrible things they do to him and Jesus before Pilate and Herod before Capius none of them are good to him remember how Jesus said Peter would deny him three times before the rooster crowed We'll see that as well, but not today. But let's go ahead. Let's see. Hang on a second. I don't think we'll see that today about Peter. You'll see a little bit of how they treat Jesus today. Maybe with Capius. Yeah, I think with Capius. But I don't know about Peter. It might say, I don't think so about Peter today, at least maybe not all of it, but it might. I can't really tell. We'll see. If not today, probably tomorrow. Okay, but let's go ahead and get started with Matthew. We'll see. Let me go through it. While he, Jesus, was still speaking, Judas, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, arrived. So, of course, this is going to make him not one of the twelve any longer. But someone else will later be replaced as one of the twelve when Jesus leaves and goes back to heaven. But remember, Jesus, after he was raised from the dead, stayed on the earth for 40 days before he ascended to heaven. And they seen him. He was seen by all the disciples. While he, Jesus, was still speaking, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs. They didn't even need those. Jesus was not a violent man. Sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people, now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. Judas had arranged a signal with them. Judas said, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. So Judas is going to betray the Son of God with a kiss. How low can you go? Betray your own brother. Because they were like brothers, friends, with a kiss. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions, which has been said in other books, was Peter, reached for his sword, drew it out, 
and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put the sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? And then, of course, it says in another book, Jesus touched his ear and healed it. In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Every single one fell away, just like he said. And every single one said they would go down to death with him. They all ran up, they all fled away, all eleven. Because remember, Judas was with the crowd. He didn't have to flee, because he was with the bad people, the ones arresting Jesus. So the eleven fled. They didn't want to be arrested too. They fled. But Peter Peter follows at a distance because he wants to see what's going to happen to Jesus. He's following at a distance. He's staying close. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Cappius, the high priest, the high priest that year, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. You know, they had a fire burning out in the courtyard. Everybody sitting around, you know, out in the yard, you know, just hanging out. And then the other people, where they had Jesus, were, you know, out closer to the high priest area there in the building. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. That's all they wanted all along. How many times did the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the Sadducees want to stone him? Remember trying to trip him in his words? Every time they asked him a question. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. And what? Hmm, what's the commandment? Thou shalt not give false testimony? Hmm, thou shalt not lie? But, what does it say? But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward? Hmm. They shouldn't do that, should they? Don't give false witness. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Jesus wasn't talking, though, about what they think he was talking about the temple of building. He was talking about the temple as in his body. And he, the temple was destroyed. And it was restored in three days. He was resurrected in three days. That was not a lie. It was the truth. It's, the, it's not his fault they don't know what he's talking about. That's their own fault. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest, Cathias, said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, what do you think is going to happen when they heard Jesus say that? It ain't going to make them too happy, is it? Then the high priest, Cathias, tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now we have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists 
other slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Yeah, that's what they did, and that's only the beginning. This is just when they first arrested Jesus. This is just the first place they took him. Spit in his face, hit him in the mouth, all of them punched him with their fists. Prophesy, who hit you? You know, mocking him. Pretty much just making fun of him and hitting him, making a big joke out of him. And he done nothing wrong. They was just happy to finally get their hands on him, to be able to do what they wanted to him. And they are. Would he do the same to them? No. Jesus, you know, when for doing, for being the way they are, I'm sure, you know, they'll answer for it and they'll go to hell probably. But you think Jesus is going to spit in their face and punch them with many blows and flog them and all that before they're sent to hell? No, you know he wouldn't. They're just cruel. I don't even, I mean, I don't even know. That's up to God and Jesus who goes to heaven and hell. I'm not even saying anything. I'm just saying Jesus would not spit in their face or hit them like they did him. No matter what. You know he would. Okay. And Psalm 32 uh, of David, a mascal. And it has 11 verses. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love sur surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. And that was Psalm 32 of David a masterful. It's pouring the snow. We're supposed to get another two to three inches tonight. The weatherman said it's supposed to be like this all month. The sidewalk's covered again already. It's really fine, small snow. A weatherman said years ago, and I still remember this, that his grandma always told him, and this has been true, he said he remembers it it sticks true to this day, he said, and ever since I heard it, I always watched to see if it was true, and it always has been. His grandma always told him, little snow, big snow. If the snow snowflakes were always little, 
that means you was going to have a big snow. And if the snowflakes were big and fluffy, you wasn't going to get much snow. And that's true. Because these snowflakes are really tiny, and a lot of them, really tiny snow. And it's adding up, piling up out there. The sidewalk's covered. We're supposed to get two to three inches. It's always, it's always like that. Little snow, big snow. So you guys might want to remember that little saying. Little small snow adds up. Little snow, big snow. The big puppy snow usually just melts, goes away. You gotta worry about the little snow. It adds up. The little snowflakes. We got a lot of Proverbs again today, guys. We're ending today's Bible reading with Proverbs chapter 8, verses 27 through 32. I was there when he set the heavens in place when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I, constant, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, Rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. And that was Proverbs chapter 8, verses 27 through 32. Alright guys, that was everything for our Bible reading today. I hope it touched your hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.